auto false echo suppression. In a perfect world, all of our applications would be on smooth walled vessels and the transducer or radar device would be mounted in the optimal position. Well, those applications are rare. In the real world, we have to deal with poor mounting locations. We have obstructions in the tank that can interfere with the material echo. These obstructions can be feed pipes, weld seams, ladders, agitators, cables, support structures, or anything that can impede the transmitted pulse. In this example, the true material echo is the second echo. The first echo is an echo from a pipe entering the vessel near the top. We confirm this by visually inspecting the vessel and comparing the distance to the pipe to the distance shown on the echo profile. If our material echo was always stronger than the obstruction echo, then we would never have to worry about getting a false measurement reading. But what if the material echo got weaker as the material approached the bottom of the vessel? In this case, we have the risk that the ALF algorithm or ALF algorithm would select the obstruction echo as the true echo. How can we eliminate this risk and have the level device ignore the obstruction echo? The answer is auto-false echo suppression. With auto-false echo suppression, we can teach the level measurement device to automatically ignore the obstruction echo. It does this by shaping the TVT curve over the obstruction echo. We can set the auto-false echo suppression parameter with either the handheld programmer or somatic PDM. I will show you how this is done with somatic PDM. First, you select the auto-false echo suppression tab. Here we see an example of what the echo looks like before the echo suppression and what it may look like after the echo suppression. The next step is to enter the suppression range. The suppression range is the distance to the true material echo minus 50 centimeters. In our example, the material echo is at 6.5 meters, so we will enter 6 meters into the range field. We then click on the Set Range button and then the Learn button to turn on Auto False Echo Suppression. The device will now automatically shape over the obstruction echo. When we run our ALF algorithm again, we can see that the material echo gets marked as the true echo and the TVT curve is shaped over the obstruction echo. As the conditions in the vessel change, the dynamic TVT will adapt to these changes and we can be assured that the unit will continue to track the true material echo. The auto false echo suppression algorithm can be found in most of our radar products, except for the LR300 and LR400. It is also in our Multi Ranger 100 and 200. Hydro Ranger 200, and the ProValue ultrasonic products. Narrow Echo Filter. In applications where we have multiple obstructions caused by ladders or weld seams, we can get an echo profile that looks like this. To reduce the likelihood of these obstructions interfering with our true material echo, we can use the Narrow Echo Filter. This filter is set manually. The value to use is based on the width of the echo you want to eliminate. The larger the value, the more of the echo that is eliminated. This is the profile after setting the narrow echo filter. You can see that the top part of all of the echoes have been cut off. It is important to use this filter only on solids applications. The true material echo for solids applications will always be wider than the obstruction echoes. Echo Reform In solids applications, the echoes are typically broader and shorter than echoes in liquids applications. In some of the more difficult applications, we can see some strangely shaped material echoes. I call these echoes two-headed monsters. These monsters are caused by the physical nature of the product being monitored. Most solids do not lie flat in a vessel. When the vessel is filled, the material piles up in a cone shape. The slope of that cone is due to the material's angle of repose. This angle is different for every material. When a transmitted pulse strikes this cone of material, the pulse invariably splits in two. One part of the pulse returns directly to the sensor. The other part of the pulse reflects off the cone and returns to the sensor slightly later. When the sensor interprets these two echoes, it creates this two-headed monster. This monster creates problems when the sensor is trying to select the correct echo. Sometimes it will pick the first echo, sometimes it will select the second echo. If you were to look at these echoes over time, say for example on a filling trend graph, you would see something like this. Your customer would be asking, if we fill the vessel at a constant rate, why do we see such an ugly trend and how do we fix it? Luckily, we have something that will tame the two-headed monster, the echo reform parameter. 
When we apply the echo reform parameter, we eliminate the two-headed monster and get one echo. Now when we look at the filling trend, it looks like this. Much nicer.